Hi, sir. Here, I'm Officer James Frederick PD. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Today's video shows footage of police searching the house of a woman who has been reported as missing with her two children. Early on the morning of August 13, 2018, Christopher Watts strangled his pregnant wife, Shannon. Afterward, he loaded her body along with his two daughters, four-year-old Bella and three-year-old Celeste. He drove them to an Anadarko petroleum site where he was currently working and smothered his daughters with their blankets. Shannon's friend and co-worker Nicole Utoft Atkinson began to feel uneasy when Shannon missed an important doctor's appointment, a meeting at work, and was also not responding to texts. She contacted Chris Watts as well as the police, asking them to perform a wellness check. So we're just waiting for our sergeant to come over and we'd like to go through your house. Are you okay with yeah. us searching through your house? Yeah. All right. Um, we'll have you sign a consent form. We just want to see if you left a note or anything in, okay. inconspicuous, something like that. All right. Um, so uh, if you're good with that, we'll have you sign a consent form okay. allowing us to search your house and okay. uh, we'll wait for our sergeant to get here. But okay. we'll grab that. You don't plan on going any, anywhere, right? No, I was just going to walk around the neighborhood just to ask through my head. Which company do you work for? Anadarko. Anadarko. What do you do for them? Operator. So you work like seven days a week? Five and two. Like Monday through Friday. I'm doing eight and six next month. Okay. So today is Monday? Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's, let us grab that form and then uh, okay. we'll wait for our supervisor and then you can either stay here or you can go walk the neighborhood, whatever you'd like. We look through it. The last thing anyone wants to do when a loved one is missing is fill out paperwork, especially when it feels like you should just be able to give verbal permission so that they can get the job done faster. Legally, however, the police have to cover themselves if someone later claims no permission was given, and in cases where evidence is discovered, it allows that evidence to be collected. All right, let's go grab that form. We'll be right back with you, okay? Yeah, that's fine. I think so. So Chris, it's your house. You can go inside with us if you'd like, or you could stay out here. It doesn't matter to us. It doesn't matter. I mean, free reign, just whatever you got to do. Okay. Like I can show on the decks on the side of the sun. But okay. Cool. All right. Whatever you'd like. How long have you guys been married? So we've been together eight years. Married six this year. Okay. And this is very unusual behavior. Yeah, can you get that dog out of here? Okay. She's gonna flip. Uh, so when you guys come home, do you usually use the front door or the garage door? How do you guys? I usually open the garage door, come in. Okay. She's front or garage. It just kind of depends. Okay. Is that a ring out there? Oh, that was. No, the doorbell is that a ring? Yeah, like, it, like when it when you got a visitor, it does. And but I don't think the speaker is on to where you hear it. Like if I. Okay. My question. I guess my question for you is, would it show her leaving with the kids? Did you have yeah, any alerts? If she came out here, yes. Like if. Did you have any alerts today with that? Just when her friends were here. 
Does it only record when the doorbell rings or anytime if someone? If you're like right here, yeah. it should just start. The proximity should hit up. Okay. And if you had any anything on that today? Just her friends. And what time was that? Twelve ten. Although they are often used as an inexpensive security measure, these types of doorbell cameras have proven to be very helpful in investigations. In this case, in particular, evidence was recorded not only on the Watts camera, but that of a neighbor's as well. And I brought back 10, 10 minutes afternoon. Okay. But nothing between the time when she got here this Not morning. like she got here at 2. The only thing this that morning? Was, yeah, 2, two, two o'clock this morning. Okay. Like 148 on here. And the only thing that was weird was that the garage door set is left open after I left. And it might have been the sensor, but like my phone doesn't show when it when For it your shuts. alarm? Yeah, it doesn't show if it shuts. And who's so, your alarm through? Vivid. Okay. But the Nikki, her friend that was that came here about twelve ten, she said the garage door shut when she got here. Okay. So that was the only thing that was weird. All right. Were you gonna hang out out I'll there or you, you wanna come in here? I'll throw it here? Okay. Where's the purse at? Oh my god. I'm still recording, so. Yep. This. Whose phone is that? I believe that is his. Uh, bomb over to hers. Is that a diary or what is that? It's for work, I believe. I was thinking it was possibly a diary, but it's talking about. I like motivation stuff. The officer is taking photos of prescription medicine bottles. In a missing person case, this is a very bad sign. When things like these are left behind, it is a major red flag indicating foul play. How did you say the kids were? This is very neat for having two little kids. Most likely he is giving the shower a quick check to see if there are any visible signs of blood around the drain. Often a drop or two is missed in a hasty cleanup. Who's got asthma? Kids need medication too, and apparently they didn't. She didn't take their medication either. Celeste, this is all their medication. An even more troubling sign: a person may go off without their own medication, but leaving behind a child's asthma meds just isn't something most parents would do willingly. Yeah, the Celeste, kid. the kid. Mm-hmm. That's albuterol for a nebulizer.
looking for an inhaler. Yeah. We are already out here. Yeah. Nothing in the car. Dispatch Frederick 988. Can you log 528 Zebra John Victor? They are really organized people. But everything's like super organized.
Watching the officer's search, it's impossible not to feel some level of heartbreak when you realize that as he is looking under and behind objects, he is not calling out. This means that he is almost certainly looking for bodies. While they don't know it at the time, these were the blankets used to smother the two children. Well, you know, missing the kids' blankets. What's that? The only thing that's gone is the kids' blankets, like the binkies. That's why they won't go anywhere without them. And they are gone? Yep. Car seats are in the car. Keys are in the igniter on the center console of the car. For cash, all their ID, everything's still here. Phones here. See if that one's something locked. Locked. Yeah, press that thing and see how long it takes. So she doesn't have any family or anyone around here? Neither of us do. They're all back in North Carolina. We moved here back in 2012. Came out here to visit some friends during Thanksgiving, fell in love with the place, moved out here a few months later. Does she have any friends around here? Just fr friends? Yeah. Yeah, she's got I mean, friends in Frederick, Erie, Aurora, that part of Erie, Broomfield. Parker. Have you tried to contact any of them? Oh yeah, we've exhausted every option. I'm just, the last thing I'm going to do is hospitals. Ho I mean, hotels. If, I mean, there's so many, but... It's and no one's heard from her today? Have you checked your bank accounts? That's what another thing I was going to do, because I don't have access through here. Let's go check those and see if she pulled any cash out, or uh, if there's any strange charges or anything. Okay. Can you log? I can't log in, because she she, she does all the finances. Okay. So I, I know her password. I just don't have her user ID. I'm not sure what she would have used that way. Sorry, my phone's just blowing up right now. No, you're fine. Um, who do you guys bank through? USAA and Chase. Can you call them and see if yep. there's been any activity? Any withdrawals or anything? And then the suitcases that she came home this morning with, which ones were those? Were that, was that the black one, one that's sitting right there. Not the one in the bedroom? Mm-mm. That was from the last trip, we, or 
when we just got back a few days ago from North Carolina. She went to Arizona like two days later. That was when we just got put back down in the in the basement. You guys don't have any stockpiles of cash or anything in the house that she would have had if she needed cash. She needed to go to the bank to get it. If there is, I would not know about it. I mean, if there was, I didn't know. Do you know how much cash she usually carries with her? It usually not maybe like a hundred. No money will be shown as being withdrawn by Shannon, which is another strong indicator that she hasn't left of her own will. And fortunately for this investigation, one of Shannon's friends was immediately concerned when Shannon failed to show up for a doctor's appointment and didn't return texts, which was unusual behavior. Your turn signal's on. It's been on. Might have to turn in here. Dispatch, Frederick 988. Can you log Queen Frank Tom 682? Is this the truck you always drive? Yeah, you can go in the house, yeah. Wow. Oh, there's no computer in it, so I don't know how how the GPS, uh, if it's computer... Are you on? Yeah. Do you have a passport? Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure she keeps that one. Watts sways nervously from side to side as he is questioned and does not make eye contact. As soon as possible, he slides away from the officers. Normally, someone who is afraid for their family's safety will hover around the police, trying to get them to hurry or asking for information. Kids have passports? No. They're oh, they old enough. How old are they? Four and three. Yeah, they're old enough. Oh, they are. No, they haven't traveled anywhere out of the country. So. Yeah, they have a passport for all of them. Oh, okay. So that taxi cab service, did you guys use anything like that? Uh, that might be Uber. Yeah, that could be. And if you look through here and see if all of her cards are here? He doesn't know how many I don't she know has. how many she has. She has different ones than me as far as credit cards go. Like we have the same debit cards, the same account, but like... These are, these are debit cards? Yeah, those are the same, yeah, same account. Then, do your kids have like a favorite pair of shoes that they normally wear? Favorite pair of shoes? Yeah. No, they, have, they have all their shoes are in the closet right here. They, they just do you know which ones they normally wear? Like, like whatever they want to wear, they say, say pick your shoes and go through them. 
fellas on this side, CC's on that side. Sure. Do your kids take any medication? CC takes Singular and Amerisol. How often? Singular is every night for allergies, and Amerisol for the kind of for like the acid reflux. Is one of them on inhalers? They they haven't done it since they got back. Um, I think it might have ran out because the last one I saw it had zero on it, so we hadn't refilled that one yet. From North Carolina? Yep. And when did you guys get back? I think it was, so it would be, I went back to work on the 8th, so we got back on the 7th. Okay. And then she left Arizona on Friday and got back last night. And she had the kids with her last night? Yes. Or you had the kids? Oh, I had the kids, like all weekend. Okay. Yeah. They went to a birthday party yesterday over at my friend's house down the street. And then, is someone sleeping in the basement? I did a few times the separation thing. I just sprung. How How recently? Probably about two nights ago, three nights ago, when she was here. So probably last time <coughs> was Thursday, Thursday night, Friday. Okay. And then your kids, do they sleep in their own bed yeah, or do they, they sleep with you those, guys? Those two adjacent rooms, they connect to that bathroom. You're lucky. <laughs> I'm going right under your uh, and sheets and stuff are off in the master bedroom. I uh, know. Uh, so, like, when she she got back from the airport last night, usually, like, she just she just jumped in the bed. So, like, most of the time when she does that, she'll want to wash the sheets the next day to get the airport off them since she was, just came off the airport. Okay. That's the only thing I can think of. It's odd that he isn't more concerned about his daughter being without her medication. He also isn't trying very hard to figure out what shoes the girls might have been wearing anything that someone might recognize and use to identify them if a description is given to the public. The shoe, they were still on it when oh, yeah, the shoe was in bed. Yeah. <coughs> so you were in that bed last night? Yeah. I was up there because the monitor and stuff was up there. I was waiting for her to get back home. And then she works from home? Is that right? Yes, direct sales. Okay. So her, yeah, she works from phone and anything the computer talk, and then is that the office things. she uses for work oh she she can do anywhere in here she can be sitting on the couch and do oh okay she doesn't have like a designated area no all right she can go anywhere and you can't think of anywhere she'd want to go she uh, go for walks around here no i go for runs she goes she doesn't Will they go for do anything as far as going for walks or anything? And you've talked to all the friends you guys have around the area? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and what was the conversation this morning you guys had? It was about the selling the house and the separation. And how'd she take that? We were both pretty emotional. I was both crying. And then did you see her before you went to work? Did mm -hmm. you say anything to her? Well, she went back, like, when she told me she was going to go to her friend's house and be with the kids, take the kids with her. Oh, she told you she was taking the kids to yeah. her friend's house? Yeah. She didn't say who, though? Oh, no, no. No, but she was still in bed when that happened. And this was after the conversation? Yeah. It was between, like, 4 or 5 a.m. I woke up about 4 o'clock. What time did she get home? One forty-eight. So did you get to sleep for a little while, and then... Oh, yeah. Like, I was passed out when she got home. And then did you wake her up? Yeah, when I got up. And that's when you discussed yeah. the yeah, issue? Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to do it like over a text or over a phone call. I wanted to be face to face with it. How long did that conversation last? Probably like 30, 45 minutes. And then you went to work? Mm -hmm. I went. To, I left about 5.15, 5.30 right in that time frame. And then she said she was going to her friend's house with kids. Mm -hmm. But she was still here when I left. You went to a job site or you went to the main plant or where'd you go? I went to location first. Where was that? By, by Hudson, over there, east of Hudson. And there was someone there at the time when you got there? No, no. Uh, one of the operators, he had an issue there on Friday, about to run over the weekend. I went over there just to kind of verify what kind of issue was he, was he was having, see if I could fix it. Then we went to a pumping unit across the across the ranch over there. Over there most of the day, that's when I got the phone calls and text messages. And are you guys on like Canary 49? Where are you guys at? Oh, like, you know, like Rockin' is? Yep. Yeah, out there. Who's your entry on? Serbi. Okay.
I know where that's at. So what kind of tools did you have to load up in the garage? It was just mainly my got my water bottles and my water jug, my computer, book bags, I had my containers full of just uh, my O-rings, all that stuff, just putting it all in there because I took it out a lot. Do you load it up every day? I'll just like on the Monday like after I get all that stuff because I had an issue where somebody stole all my tools out of my truck. My pipe wrenches are gone, my socket set's gone, my... what else? My wrench set's gone. Like We had an issue, I, that's why I parked my truck in front of the neighbor's house that for like a few days just to see if like I could see if anybody was breaking it, try to break it into my truck again. It was my fault. I left it unlocked. So as far as the toolbox is on the back. So on the weekend you download your stuff? Everything out. Mm-hmm. And then on Monday you load it. Oh yeah, I just put it all back in. Just okay. to kinda of get everything out of my truck, clean it out a little bit from the whole week. Because okay. it gets filthy in there. How long you guys lived here since 2012 or a different house? No, like, so 2012 we moved here, lived in a friend's basement in Broomfield. Okay. And we had, we closed on this house. It was built 2013 in May, and that's when we moved in there. Okay. Does she have any other friends in this neighborhood? No, nah, I mean, we haven't talked to many people around here, honestly. It's mostly in Erie, yeah, in Broomfield? Erie, Broomfield, Frederick. Uh, Where at in Frederick, do you know? So we had, like, they just lived up here in Frederick Way. They actually just moved down to Thornton, Nick and Amanda Thayer. Okay. Uh, Nikki, she lives up, the one that was here, she lives in Frederick. The one that dropped her off? Yep. Okay. Yeah, she lives, like, uh, over there building that new stoplight, that, that bridge over there. Right. Okay. And you have no, no idea of what friend? So all your friends pretty much have kids the same age? Mm-hmm. So it's hard to. It's really hard. I mean, we've exha I've exhausted every option I know of as far as friends goes. Like Nikki know, knew more of them because of the woman, and that's about as, as, about as far as we could go as far as all the friends that we could think of. All right. So if you talk to some of her friends, um, tell them that we're looking for her, and we just need to make sure that she's okay, and uh, she can call us. She doesn't have to call you. Um, that if that's what she's worried about, about, you know, you're trying to get a hold of her and she don't want to talk to you, so have them refer her to us if they know where she's at. Okay. She's saying. Just so we, whatever's going on between you guys, that's between you guys, and she doesn't want to talk to you, that's fine. We just don't want to waste resources looking for her if she's actually okay. So, like, okay. if you can relay to the friends, hey, I understand she doesn't want to talk to us, at least have her call the police so that they know she's okay. Okay. Type deal, if right. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, that way that... We know that she's okay, and whatever's going on between you guys, you guys can kind of figure that out. Okay. Type deal. Um, do you have any questions for us before we get out of here? Mm -hmm. I mean, call area hospitals, call hotels. That's about. I mean. Someone said she was diabetic. She had her friend Cassie in Arizona. She's a nurse, and she knows she had low blood sugar when she was down there. That's that's why I brought that up. Oh, okay. She never had seizures or blacked out or anything. Yeah. It was just like. That was a long, long time ago before I even met her. She had a horrific car accident. They think she might have blacked out or had a seizure. They just couldn't really figure it out. Like, she just had a car accident. She just flew out of the car. And you have his contact info? Yeah. I think, or I think the detective did. Yeah, they went along. Okay. And if you hear, uh, did you get a card or anything? From the detective, yes. Okay. So there's a dispatch number on there? Okay. If you hear anything from her, uh, call that number and let us know, and it'll just go straight to our dispatch, and then an officer will call you right back. Okay. Uh, that way, our, our main concern is to make sure she's okay and the kids are okay. So, um, if you hear a peep from her, just call us, and we'll call you or leave us a contact number to reach her so we can talk to her. Okay. What's your date of birth? 5 What's that? 5 It's not unusual in cases that involve couples separating for one of them to walk out without letting the other person know where they're going. This has led to the waste of resources that could have been going to other cases. So the officer asking to spread the word for Shannon to call them has become routine. However, when the leaving is voluntary, at least one friend or family member will come forward with some type of information, which isn't happening in this situation. Watts was arrested on August 15th, 2018 after he failed a polygraph test and later confessed 
to killing his wife. Watts was having an affair and claimed he asked for a separation from Shannon. The authorities located the bodies of the Watts family on the Anadarko Petroleum site on August 16th. The girls' bodies were found in crude oil storage tanks while Shannon was buried in a shallow grave nearby. On November 19th, he was sentenced to five life sentences, three consecutive and two concurrent, without the possibility of parole. He received an additional 48 years for the unlawful termination of Shannon's pregnancy and 36 years for three charges of tampering with a deceased body. His sentence began immediately.